We are live in three, two, one. And now it's time for Nerd Talk with Slider, Brent, and Ryan. Hey guys, what's up? It is time for another episode of Nerd Talk. I am Slider, one of your hosts, and along with me is Brandon. Hey guys, what's up? And Todd Pyro. Hey, what's up? And tonight, we are talking about a lot of shit, because we kind of missed last week, and we're still doing some catch-up, but for good reason. So, tonight we're starting off with... Murder on the Orient Express. And if you'll notice, I have the spoiler alert tag because we are going to talk about everything that occurred in this movie. So if you have not seen this movie and you don't want the movie spoiled for you, I imagine you should hit mute right the fuck about now. So, Murder on the Orient Express. I want to go last because I have an opinion that appears to be very unpopular about this movie. And I think I want to hear Brandon's opinion first. I... I actually liked it. Um, Now, before I go into it too much, uh, I I will say this. I know Ryan or Todd Pyro did not see the movie, so he read about it and read uh, the spoilers and and read the ending. I feel if I had done that, I would not have enjoyed it anywhere near as much. Oh, yeah, that's Uh, because it's a whodunit. Yes, um, and... At one point in the movie, I I was very disappointed uh, for all of two minutes until I realized that 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 was intentional. Uh, so I had my suspicions of who did it uh, throughout. Well, not really throughout the movie, but in the beginning, you see the black doctor uh, talking to a female, and they they have a short conversation uh, that the detective overhears, and I was like, it can't be them because that's too easy. It, it, it's so obvious. And then later on, he's like, oh, yeah, I did it. I fucking murdered the guy. And I'm like, fucking, why, why would you do that? And then obviously, you know, turned out very differently. Uh, but it was so, I feel it was so intricately done with the way they wove the story and tied all of these people together. Um, so spoiler alert here, even though you know, was said earlier literally everyone on the goddamn train is the one who fucking killed the guy um i also don't know why they casted johnny depp it was entirely <laughs> pointless they, they could have shoved anyone into that role uh but overall i mean like I, I i i enjoyed the movie i enjoyed trying to figure out who did it i really liked i don't know the actual actor's name for some reason right now the the detective I really liked him and how he was OCD on things and how he picked up on everything uh, to, to figure stuff out. I mean, which is why he's the greatest detective in the world. But I, I just, I overall liked it. Uh, the only issue I had was when the, the doctor guy revealed himself as the killer. Uh, but like I said, that was all of two minutes. And then he's like, that that's not right. You're not the the actual killer, or if you are, you're not the only one. Well, uh, I'm going to go ahead next since uh, Todd just read about it. And, um, and I'm going to say this. I am surprised at what you just said, Brandon, because I didn't like this movie. I loved this movie. I fucking loved this movie. I mean, I really, really that's, enjoyed it. So wait, okay. that's, that's the unpopular opinion. I mean, I, yes, I didn't been, read, I didn't I've been read looking reviews at, on it. I, yeah, I've been looking at reviews, and the reviews have a lot of negative things to say. And what's interesting about that is I don't disagree with the reviews. However, and, and I'm going to cover that here in a second. Kenneth Branagh's performance as a detective is fantastic. He so brings you in as that character, and you totally believe he is the kind of person that picks up on everything, that every little inconsistency bothers. When he's walking from uh, the, uh, I think it's the station, to the boat that he was originally supposed to to be on, uh, he steps in a pile of shit. Yeah. 
that, that, was, what, that was fucking good. What bothers him isn't that he stepped in a pile of shit. It's that now that he stepped in the pile of shit, the shit is asymmetrical. So he has to step his other foot in the pile of shit to make it symmetrical, and then he's okay with that. And I think that completely sets the tone for who this detective is and how well, he does I, things what he does. I do have a comment about that because when they first introduce him with the child running with the eggs, before I figured out he was OCD when he started measuring them, I thought he was just an asshole. I agree with that. I agree. It's, like, it's just like, wow, this guy's kind of a dick, right? Um, and obviously as it progresses, you realize, oh, he's not a dick. He just has issues. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, well, and he was nice to the kid. He wasn't mean about it. He's like, he's like, no, you know, you you keep them. He's like, they're not, right. but you know, you keep them. Enjoy, you know. And so they they establish who he is as a character through those scenes, right? And then once the actual interactions with the the uh, uh, complement of the train crew occurs, you find out he's friends with the guy that basically runs the. The, the, the train in transit and you find out a little bit about each character. Right. And like you said, the whole thing with uh, Johnny Depp. Yeah. About them. Not, yeah. not really about them, but, <laughs> but like no fucking reason for Johnny Depp to be in this movie. Absolutely zero. You could have put a paper mache doll in his place and it would have functioned exactly the same way. Yeah. Right? He didn't, he didn't have many lines. Um, and the lines that were there weren't Johnny Deppish in any fashion. It was just a guy who was a scumbag. Now, here's the funny part about that. Um, I know you know this, Brandon, but people that are are, are kind of new to this, and you, Ryan, I don't like Johnny Depp. Oh, um, I don't like the only one. I don't like most of the things that he's in. I think back in the day, he did some really good roles, but then he started doing like all these quirky, crazy fucking characters, and none of them worked for me. And that includes the goddamn uh, Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, I, I think it started like, with Pirates. I think I started with Pirates, and then he just kept that same personality trait through all the movies that he's done since. To, to be fair, though, he does. <laughs> And is doing the uh, Pirates of the Caribbean movies because of his kid. And he named his kid uh, Jack. Yeah, I, I get that. It's still not an enjoyable character for me. Um, no, and, and, and I get that. It's, it's definitely not for everyone. Um, right. I, re I really liked him in Secret Window, uh, to be honest. That was probably one of my favorite roles that I saw him do. One of my favorites is obviously Edward Scissorhands. Oh, but yes. Yes, I'm wanna, so glad you said that. If you want to come more recent, though, I really, really, really liked him as uh, the demon barber of... Oh, uh, Todd Sweeney Todd. Yeah, Sweeney Todd. Sweeney Todd, but Todd. It's a de the demon barber of... Baker Street. Baker Street, thank you. Right? I love that movie, and you guys know I like musicals, but, I mean, I really, really enjoyed that... Uh, that that movie and he wasn't quite the normal character he was but he wasn't this fucking fairy tale weirdo that he likes to be in in a lot of his movies so so that said johnny depp really was out of place in this movie but even though he was kind of an asshole his character was unlikable he wasn't that normal weirdo character that he was he was just kind of like hey i'm a dick and i'm gonna show you that i'm a dick and that was How the end of the time movie. that he have maybe 10 minutes? maybe 10 minutes if at if that yeah um, it was it was not much well, I, he, had, he, he had a he had a few lines to show that he was an asshole and then he was dead yeah and then the longest scene he has is when he meets the detective and every scene with the detective is good you know but Again, not because of Johnny Depp, it's because of the detective, it's because of uh, Kenneth Branagh. Oh, for 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 sure. Yeah. Um. Well, and one of the things I actually really like, well, I mean, there's a lot of things I like about the movie, but I thought was hilarious. I should say, is that when he is sleeping on the train, and he gets woken up. You see, he's wearing a protective cover over his mustache. <laughs> yes. To keep it in perfect shape. Because let's be honest, that mustache was the fucking star of this movie. Oh yeah, that mustache was incredible, right? But 
And, and here's where I, the reason I say the, how much I liked this movie differs is not, is an unpopular opinion is because this movie has a star studded cast. You know, you've got uh, Daisy Ridley, you've got, uh, darn it. What's her name? Not Sharon Stone. Um, help me out here, Brandon. I can't think of her name right now. I know oh, who I you're can't. talking about. Yeah. Um, you've got, uh, the, all of a sudden, all the names are escaping me. Damn it! But the woman that plays M in James Bond, uh, Judy Dench, Lady Judy Dench. Um, um, got, you've, you've also got the uh, Green Goblin guy. Well, uh, names uh, are escaping me too. Yeah, uh, Willem Dafoe. Thank you. Yes. Right. I mean, this is a star-studded cast. These are super heavy hitters. All of them are talented actors, and because of the way the story works. Not a single one of them gets to shine. Not because they didn't do well. They just, the way the story unfolds for the viewer, you have limited time with each character. So the character development really isn't there other than, well, here's how I fit into the story. And that is... It it, it kind of, I mean, I think the, the character development is kind of there with the tidbits that the detective learns well, I think the character development involves the uh, the inference of who these people are based on the circumstances that they've been put into. Um, I mean, like, for, for example, like Willem Dafoe, you think he's this giant racist douchebag of a professor, and then he's not. Yeah, he turns out to be an undercover cop. You know, spoiler, that's why that tag's up there, over here. <laughs> Um, which which I thought was great that he that that he picked it up because he mispronounced a single word. Yes, you know his story and, was was flawless up until that point, but because he mispronounced a word, he's like, "Nope, I know who you are now." Yeah, because he says that he even said he's like, "Oh, he was doing so well." You know, that, that's actually a line that the detective says. Um, but I think in terms of all of the passengers, the one that stands out to me the most is Daisy Ridley. Um, and as you know, Daisy Ridley is a character or the actress that plays Ray in star Wars, but she's the governess and she is the one that has, I think the most unflinching, unsuspicious story in the entire thing until he starts poking holes into it. Everyone else is kind of a shady character on some level where she seems to be really above board. And he, I I picks up on that. I, I disagree because of the conversation that she had with the doctor on the boat. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta is, say, I gotta, go I gotta say um, the way you guys are describing this reminds me very much of Clue. <laughs> it, it's, okay, it's, it's, it's very much like Clue. Yeah, it is very much like Clue, and, and a lot of the, the critics, negative criticism comes from is for, because it's very much like Clue. You only see tidbits of each character. Is that what? No, and, and I'll clarify that for you. The negative uh, comments that that are being made by the critics are is that that Clue did it a lot better, but Clue, Clue is a movie? fucking classic. Yes, eh. Clue is awesome, Brandon. I, I kind of got excited with Brandon. It was it was good. Oh my but... god, Clue is awesome. It's a classic. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> Don't let nostalgia uh, cloud your mind, man. <laughs> yeah, like just. Eh. <laughs> this movie I really like. And actually, one of the things I like, like, not even, I mean, it's story related, but it has nothing to do with any of the characters, any of the killers on the train. I like that they essentially set this up to be poss- quite possibly a trilogy. A trilogy? How do you figure? So in the beginning, not the beginning of the movie, but before he gets on the Orient Express, uh, someone oh, comes up to him be- and he's like, uh, they try to hand him a letter. He's like, is this the blah, blah, blah case? And he's like, well, yes. He's like, well, I don't need to read it. Is it what I said? Yes. Well, all right, then I'm good to go. Oh, yeah. So that's that like was, a murder was, on the boat, right? No. Well, no. So that that was part one of that. Now, that happens later on in the movie after they reveal that everyone's the killer and he essentially lets them all go when he's getting off the train. He's approached again. When he's approached again, he asks if it's about that same case, and it's not. So him inquiring if it's about that case and having it not be about that case, and it's about some kind of other murder, 
That leads me to believe that they could do a sequel based on the case he's going to work on now with the murder and then have the third one be this big case that he's been guessing on so far but hasn't really said much about. All right. I kind of agree with you there. Um, and I'm kind of wondering right now, because as you know, Murder on the Orient Express is a novel and there have been several movies made of it. Now, whether or not there are other stories involving this detective, I am not 100% sure. I'd have to look into that. But I could see totally what you're saying there. There are other cases that they could make movies about with uh, this detective, and I think they would be equally as entertaining. Um, whether or not they're actually going to make a trilogy out of this, I well, personally, I, mean, I don't maybe, think so. Maybe not a trilogy. I mean, maybe if they do, if they did any kind of sequel at all, they could leave it at two and just have the second one pick up at the end of his solving this murder and actually pick up on the case that he t- mentioned a couple times during this movie. Well, this this movie literally could turn into a series kind of like the Bond series. I mean, this guy could have endless cases. He's he, he's pretty much a Sherlock Holmes character. Yes, however, the actor is older. Uh, of course. It takes time to yes. make movies. So. And, and, and Kenneth Branagh, is, he's very selective about the stuff that he does. He's not in just anything. Um, so I think it'd be very hard for them to do what I just suggested. A trilogy? I, I well, yeah, the, the, tr- the trilogy could be, could be up there, but I, I could definitely see a sequel. Hollywood right. loves their trilogies, though. They really do. Yeah, that's, that's why I, I thought about the trilogy, because Hollywood loves the trilogies, and they kind of they mentioned this bigger case a couple times, but then he has this murder case at the very end. Well, I think um, that that really kind of depends on how much money this movie makes. And the movie's not making that much money right now, as it seems. Um, which is odd, because, I mean, I thought it looked interesting in the trailers, and I was right in my assumption, because I, I thought the movie was good. I was speechless last night. I walked out of the theater just like, I, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I want to say stuff, but I can't right now. So when I walked out of the movie... I literally, and this is the exact, this is a quote of my thought process. I walked out and I was like, Jesus, I think this is a modern day classic. And I wasn't sure if that was accurate because of what I, what I said about the other characters. They, they really don't have any time to shine as individuals in this story. Well, and you know who does and who I feel bad for is the, the, the actual guy who owns the train. Oh, yeah, because he's like his sidekick. And, well, and he, well, he's like the sidekick, but he he got so played by oh, yeah. everyone on the train. Yes, of including, course, including including the guys who work for him. Mm-hmm. And again, that's kind of uh, 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 and this is what I said earlier about how this is what I mean about character development through the circumstances they're in, not necessarily the things that they do on screen. Right. So. The introduction of that character was basically when he meets him in the kitchen and they automatically, this conversation is like, oh yeah, he thinks I'm a scumbag. He's like, yeah, because you are a scumbag. And they agree on that. And he's like, ha ha ha. All right, let's move forward. Um, and well, now, everything- now I, I have to, yes, they said that, but I have to disagree on him actually thinking that he's a scumbag because Johnny Depp's character he knew he was a scumbag just by meeting him, and he wanted no part of him. Okay, okay. So maybe scumbag isn't the right word. Um, maybe degenerate because he he knew this guy was not a good guy, but he wasn't a bad guy either. Right. Like, so so yeah, I think there's like a line. So, and I think that de- yeah, you know, well, not think the detective can easily pick up on that line, and so that's right. why he's fine with this character, especially because the character admits like, yeah, I'm not the best guy. I sleep around. Right. Fuck prostitutes. Yeah. Well, that's the first. He's like, oh, hi, you're so and so, and you're a prostitute. And she's like, well, yes, yes, I am. Because <laughs> she was so surprised. Well, 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 also, she was, she knew who he was, and she was just excited to meet him. Right. Um, so, uh, and I'm not talking about the rest of the cast because really there's not a whole lot to talk about other than the fact that well, they. Other, other than how they played either off of each other or how they lied super well. Yes. And so so ultimately to clarify something that Brandon has been saying there, they all, this is a classic whodunit movie or whodunit story in which it turns out everyone is the killer. And when we say everyone is the killer, 
everyone is a killer. Everyone. So they basically they drug this guy, and they all have something against him. So they all take turns stabbing him. Everyone is literally the killer. Yeah, I, which I thought was great. Like, like so, like like I said, I I was upset when the doctor guy revealed that it was was him, and I, I was like, that's too fucking easy. This is that's stupid if that's true. And yeah, I, I, I had it, the same then, feeling. Th- then they corrected the situation and turned out the RR. I was like, oh wow, like yeah. that's fucking cool. Yeah, it was it was really well done. And not only is everybody the killer, when the detective figures out that everyone's the killer, he's like, I don't blame you. This guy was a piece of shit. He deserved to die. However, I can't really lie about it. So the only way out is for you guys to kill me. And he hands the gun to the person that was basically the ringleader of the uh, the whole idea of everyone killing him. The mother. Yeah, the mother. And she so, so pulls... which, If you don't know, Ryan, um, the, the whole thing that Johnny Depp did was he kidnapped a little girl and killed her. I know. Okay. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Just I guess. know. And it, the, the, the best part of that scene is he's like, this is the only way out. If you don't do this, I'm going to have to reveal you. And she pulls the trigger. Okay. On herself. Yeah, exactly. And the gun's empty. And it's how he judges her character. Okay. Like, she's basically, well, I can't let everyone go down for me. And I can't let this guy ruin his reputation. So I got to take myself out. So she pulls the trigger. Nothing happens. And he's like, all right, you're actually a good person. So I'm going to have to just live with this situation and tell people. You know, what the clues led to, which originally was the killer left the train. Yeah. Right? That, that's that someone like essentially broke in, killed him and left and left and jumped off the train. Right. So. It was really just kind of a surprise because you really thought he was going to stick to his guns and say no. Yeah, I, yeah, I did. I, I thought he was. Yeah. You thought everyone was going down for this. And he just kind of went, nope. This guy was a sack of shit, and well, and I, and his sidekick too is like, you you can't just let them kill you. Yeah, but he was like, yes, I can. You know, oh. but he also he also he handed her an empty gun. So if she pulled the trigger, he would have known. Hey, you know what? You're not that great a person. You're going down for this. Yeah, you know. All right, so you ready for my opinions? Yes, let's let's hear it. All right, as someone who hasn't seen the movie, um. First of all, I want to say that the trailer didn't interest me. I, I I didn't have the biggest want to go see the movie. I was I was worried it was going to be another Suburbicon, and we'll get to that later. But after reading the story, and you guys know that I'm a very story driven person when it comes to the when it comes to movies. So after reading the story, I. And this movie is not the best kind of movie where you want to read a story about because it's a, it's a whodunit and you sp- you spoil it for yourself. So you spoil yourself of that that aha moment. That that impact that, that yeah, yeah. this reveal had. But but reading it, it was so good. I was like, this is a movie that people should see. Just because of the story alone. Like because yeah. when I was reading it, I was like, it doesn't have all the nuances that the film has when you read it. So as I'm reading it and I get to the last paragraph, I'm like, oh shit. I'm like, okay, all right. That's 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 a good ending. Yeah, that 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 that, that ending is is was was pretty good. I, I was I was very surprised that it was literally all of them. And and the nuances that that, that you guys are talking about aren't weren't in the um, weren't in the in the plot for it. So I feel like the addition of that makes this a really good film. I and I, I get I get how the critics are saying, oh, and, and how you can critique it saying, oh, a lot of characters don't have really good um, backstory and you don't really know who they are and stuff. But you have to see it from the the detective's point of view. That's that's kind of how you're you're viewing it as as a viewer. Well, actually, and, I kind of want. Hold on, Brendan. Let me let me let me take this one. I want to clarify something. It's not that the the characters don't have backstory. The characters are all backstory. Okay, it's the lies that they tell to conceal their backstory that makes this 
his finding out what happened interesting. And that's good story writing. Yes. Yeah, you know, I say because yeah, look like it's you have to like take a step back and and look at it like yeah, all of these characters made up cover story, not just cover stories, cover identities even, um, to conceal who they were. Yeah, I mean, this is the, essentially I, the perfect crime. And yeah. it would have been if the detective had, hadn't been, been on the train, had not boarded the train because of this other case. But then. Yeah. But then again, if it was a perfect crime, why would they come up with all this backstory? Because they Actually, didn't know he was going to be there. No, they didn't know he was going to be there, but they all needed some kind of backstory so that it wouldn't lead to them. Yeah, so every character on this train on the surface had nothing to do with each other, when in reality they were completely intertwined in each other's lives. Yeah. Um, every single Ooh. person had something to do. Why would they create such a lot of backstories if, For if two they reasons. didn't know the detective was going to be there? Two reasons. One, to, to get away with the murder once it occurred. And the second was actually to fool Johnny Depp's character because had he known who they were, who they were, he'd have been like, I'm not fucking getting on this train. Yeah, because he knew somebody was out to get him. And that was kind of the premise of him meeting the detective. He's trying to hire the detective to suss out who wants to kill him. And, and the, the detective's like, go fuck nope. yourself. Yeah, go fuck You're a piece of shit. Go fuck yourself. Right. Man, if you're that big of a piece of shit that you're like, man, I think I'm going to board a train or an airplane in the modern day equivalent, but I think someone on there is going to kill me. So I'm going to bring a detective with me. That's kind of. Well, no, he, he didn't bring the detective with him. He just happened to meet the detective on there. Yeah, it was uh, uh, circumstances where he was like, hey, this detective, I know who he is. Let me try to hire him. All right. Um, but that set, Josh Gad, that's the guy's name, the guy who played his like assistant. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. Um, he did a really good job. Um, damn it. Who is the mom? Let me look it up. <laughs> All right. Well, why are you looking at a wonderful dot job? I want to vent a little bit. Because, like you guys were saying, Johnny Depp did not need to be in that movie. No. And the issue I take with that is they could have had someone else. They could have had another actor who had who. Oh, why? Because I mean, they only added him for his name. Well, I want to say, well, I mean, I, I they kind of, they, they could have picked a nobody and put it in that role as well. I mean, they didn't need to pick anyone in particular because of how little screen time and how little the character actually matters. Exactly. And you don't see very many films that go out and get relatively unknown or uh, actors who need to get their, their, their name out there. And whenever they just fill, uh, it's not like, um, what's her name? Um, who dated um, Ray William Johnson. Her name's Anna. I think it's Anna. She's a YouTuber. Um, she dated Ray William Johnson in no a lot idea. of her vlogs. She did. She was an Ant Man. She was the chick. Whenever they went through the backstory of, hey, I know this guy who knows this guy who talked to this chick. Oh yeah, yeah. Chick. And they could have put they could have put someone more famous or well known in that role, but they didn't. They gave her a chance to 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 get screen time. But, I mean, on I the other thought hand, that was good. They do do that. I mean, they put Nathan Fillion in the. Uh, credits to Guardians of the Galaxy when he played when he did the voice of Howard the Duck. He did not do Howard the Duck. That is a misnomer. He did the guy in prison that threatens them when they first get there and Groot sends his roots up his nose and picks him up. Oh, real uh, But then again, that's not what I'm kind of trying to get okay. at. I'm trying to get well, well, at I mean No, I I get what you're saying. I mean they, they could have put a nobody in. They could have put literally doesn't matter who they put in there at this point. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I agree. It didn't need to be Johnny Depp. It was, it was pointless. Okay. Uh, so, so for example, one of the characters is Penelope Cruz. Right? Yeah, Penel yeah, that's right. Penelope yeah, Cruz she, was. She played the nurse and it was like, she's such a talented actress, but for the amount of time and the things that happened that involved the nurse, they could have put anyone in that uh, particular role. Um, who else we got here? God, the list is so long. Um, there's like so many people, like even in the background. Judy Dench was the princess. Um, Olivia Coleman was her handmaid. 
Willem Dafoe was the fake professor. Professor, uh, professor Cop. Correct, Professor Cop. That's his name. Uh, wait, Cop? No, it's Gerhard no, no. Hardman. Uh, professor Cop. Okay, yes, Professor Cop. Um, oh, come on. The names are listed in alphabetical order. This is a pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> what the hell site are you looking at? IMDb. How did it pull it up in uh, in alphabetical order? It like never does that. How it did it, I don't. I can't tell you. Um, over. Easy Ridley, which I said was the uh, the uh, all pair. The, her name was uh, Mary Debham. Where is Michelle it? Pfeiffer, Jesus. Michelle Pfeiffer, yes. Why? It like, took me name, all of five seconds. Her name is like so not on this list, at least not at the front of it. But Michelle Pfeiffer was basically the ringleader. Um, she was the mother of the child, the child of the child. Yes, of the child that got murdered, and one of the uh, passengers on the train was the older sister of the child. Another one was the nursemaid of the child. Another one was the son of the prosecutor that prosecuted the case against a woman because they forced him to that killed herself. Uh, Defoe was the uh, detective investigating. Right. Uh, uh, fuck. Um, the the Judy, conductor Judy was, was the grandmother. Right. The conductor was the brother of the woman that killed herself. Um, um, one of the guys was the limo driver. Yeah. So all of these people had something to do with this child that got murdered. Right. Um, so and, and that's why and kind of what, what you said about it uh, earlier, Ryan, about how why did they come up with this elaborate backstory if they didn't know that the detective was going to be there? They knew a detective was going to be there. They didn't know the best detective in the world was going to be there. They didn't know um, a detective was going to be there. If you kill somebody, is a detective not going to come out and investigate? But he we'll wasn't out, dead look, yet. Yeah, I want to say that someone would come out. Like, so once the train arrived, they would have police uh, investigating and stuff. But, but they knew they were going to kill him, right? <laughs> well, yeah. So after they killed him, the cops were going to show up and have an investigation. So they needed a story. Yes, yes. And and that's what I'm getting at. Is Should have thrown him off the train. <laughs> Actually, Wait. that probably would have been a easier. Like, oh, he fell off the train. What the hell? You know. Ah, uh, he committed suicide. Yeah. You know, oh, he's a piece of shit, and his conscience owed a lot of money. Yeah, that and that totally would have worked out. I mean, any number of stories. How it ended out. right there, but the way it played out was far more interesting. I think this is a great movie. I think everyone that has an opportunity should go see it. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think people should see it. It it was very good. Um, I mean, it's too bad we. And maybe we can later just clip this out. Like, go see this movie before you see all our fucking spoilers that we right. just discussed. You know, it's like, um, but like Kenneth Branagh is an amazing actor. He's also the director. Um, he's just he's so good at what he does. Uh, and, and you never get to you you. I'm not gonna say never. You rarely get to see him do something like this. And it it was oh, just. Will you, will you go to the right a little, please? <laughs> no, I'm just <laughs> his character. <laughs> Right. Um, like when he's telling people to fix their ties and shit, you know, but like his, if I saw nothing but his character talking to people, I still would have loved this movie as much as I did. I agree. He I agree. makes he the, film. the movie. Yes. Um, I, I want to see a, a fanfic of it being an alternate universe. And it's just Sheldon Cooper as a detective on a train instead of Kenneth. And, you know what's funny about what you're saying is I think Sheldon Cooper would do just as well in a much more fucked up condescending way. Yeah. <laughs> because that ca I, I love the character of Sheldon Cooper. Um, I don't think the young Sheldon show is going to last. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, so if you're stuck with us this long and you haven't seen this movie, God damn it, go see this movie. It's so good and it so deserves your, your hard earned money. And it is a good time in the theater, and you're not going to regret it, I promise, unless you're a hater, and then go to hell. Um, all right, so you ready to move on? Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. Ryan, your favorite movie of the year, as far as I know. <laughs> We're talking about Suburbicon with Matt Damon. 
oh man jose it's all your fault you were like let's go see suburbicon it's in theaters hey i was super excited super excited when i realized hey suburbicon's out and this looks like it's going to be really interesting let's go see it and so we can talk so about I'm, it i'm sure your letdown was much oh. bigger than mine fucking a right all right i so- am so glad that i didn't see it because like you two well not, maybe not maybe not you ryan but like you jose i i saw the, the trailer and i was like this looks pretty cool yeah. And then you guys saw it and, and said it. I was like, fuck that. Yeah, so, I, I don't... Go ahead, all Ryan. Right, go all, ahead. Right, all right, so I went into this movie, and usually there aren't that many movies I go into that I don't know the story before I go into the movie. Because that's just me. So I went into this movie, because you, you recommended it, and I was like, okay, all right, I'm going to go into this movie, not look anything up about it, not look up any reviews, and it was the worst decision I've ever made this movie was garbage. <laughs> I, think, I, I thought that was garbage. I don't know if garbage is a strong enough word. <laughs> From a person who likes, I like, I like being put into the movie. I like sympathizing with characters or in, empathizing with characters. And I couldn't, I couldn't get that with any of the characters in this movie. I mean, that's, that's, that has to do with the story of the movie, but I didn't so, get that. I got I got that feeling with his uncle, with the little boy's uncle, and then he died. So I'm going to lay this out, and this is why the spoiler tag is still up. Okay, the movie you expect to see is a man with his family in the 50s slash 60s era, where he gets threatened and he defends his family and he has to justify all the bad things he's doing to them in order to not seem like a bad person. This is the movie I expected to see. The movie I got was super, super, super different. Okay. First of all, it's directed by George Clooney. I really like George Clooney. However, he's done some really major pieces of shit. Uh, as a director. And- as, as a director, director as a director yes um including the hail caesar hail caesar was another one of these movies where you had this loaded cast and you expected such great things and it was just a piece of garbage okay gravity. Gra- well, i actually liked gravity um more than most people um but as you get into this movie like like ryan said there's no one to root for. The only one to root for is the kid, and the kid has r- no real influence on the story. Yeah, nothing, he has no power. He has no yeah. nothing no he's doing. What's going on? Nothing he's doing is driven by him. Everything is happening to him, right? So he's just kind of the victim, which I think we're meant to be. We're supposed to put ourselves in the the kid's seat, but it's just like, man, everyone in this movie is fucked up. Even the uncle. The uncle is the one guy who they give you up front. They're like, this guy's kind of an asshole. He's shady. We don't know what he does, right? In the end, he is the best guy in the film, and they kill him off. You know, And when I say the best guy, I mean the nicest guy, the, the, the white hat, if you will, of the film. No one in this movie is good. He's the okay? only one who gave a shit about the kid. Yes, right? And not that includes dad. not the not aunt, not the aunt. dad. The mother, eh, it's kind of hard to say because they, uh, um, they, uh, so darn it. Why can't I remember anybody's name today? Um, who's the actress that played the twins? Ryan? Oh, I'm the uh, worst person to ask. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look it up. Um, because, and I'm she, definitely the worst person to ask because I didn't even see the movie. She does a really good job as both. At first, I thought they were mother and daughter because one of them looks so much older than the other. Um, oh, they did and, a, that, they did a great job at that though. Yeah, they did a really good job at, at showing you why it's like that, uh, why you have that thought. Um, are you serious? She's not in the the first few names of the of the listing on IMDb again. Come on. She's a big actress too. She's not Julia Roberts. She's someone else. Um, <laughs> but basically, there's twins, and Matt Damon is married to one of the twins. They have an accident, and she gets put in a wheelchair, and they end up. She ends up getting killed by some nefarious people, right? And what Juliet you find Moore. out, Juliet Moore, uh, Julianne Moore. Yeah. 
Yes, thank you. Julianne Moore plays, you know, the, the two sisters. And the mom, the, the, the one character, ends up getting killed by one of these these nefarious people. And you think this is going to kind of be where Matt Damon stands up and defends his family. That's not the case. What ends up, ends up being is the person that killed the mother was actually hired by Matt Damon. And he was trying to have an affair with her sister. And they were going to go away to Aruba or, or wherever the hell it was. Um, and they were going to use the insurance money from her death to do that. Right. And when things started going south, they were like, well, I guess we're going to have to kill the kid. And the kid was his son, his biological son. He, he raised this kid and he was like, oh, I guess we got off him. He was a piece of shit. The character. And I hated everyone in this movie except the kid. Right. But I'm going to try to be positive here and say, None of the actors did a bad job in portraying the person that they were supposed to be. All of them did what they were supposed to, which was you were supposed to fucking hate these people, right? However, and this kind of leads into what we're going to talk about next. This is not the story that they prepared you for when they sold you a ticket. (laughs) You know, you went into this movie expecting one thing. You got something completely different and it was terrible. You know, they tried to deal with it in a humorous manner. And by the way, all the funny scenes, all of the funny scenes were in the trailer. Oh my God. Okay. And they give you the ending of the movie in the goddamn trailer. And I hate when they do that shit because you're sitting there in the climactic scene going, all right, what's going to happen? And then they do the thing that you saw in the trailer and you're like, motherfucker. Oh my God, Jose. What part was it? They need to figure out what the fuck their fire department is doing in that goddamn town. <laughs> They're well, driving down fucking like a fucking like rural, like not rural, but populated area, like a suburban street going like 80 miles an hour. And to another car head on. Yeah. So and then a bicyclist. He just enlighten me, away. Enlighten what me what? What, enlighten me as to what the ending was. That okay, was so in the trailer, they show Matt Damon sitting down talking to his son, and he picks up a sandwich, and he takes a bite out of it, and then he drinks some milk, right? Okay. In and of itself, that sounds very innocuous. Throughout the course of the film, once they decide that they have to kill the child, one of the ways they decide they're going to kill the child is they make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and they lace the sandwich with a ton of sleeping pills, and then they pour a glass of milk and they pour the rest of the crushed sleeping pills in the milk. The idea is to give the kid an overdose. Well, his aunt did that. Not his, his dad. Did his dad right. didn't know. What the f- Okay. What? So, his, so the dad doesn't know that that happened. Then the aunt ends up getting killed by an insurance adjuster who's supposed to be investigating them, finds out what they're doing, and instead of turning them in, blackmails them for a piece of the pot. Okay. So she ends up dying. Once she dies, the, uh, uh, the, the sandwich and the milk are still on the table. He sits his kid down to say, hey, here's the situation. You can choose to die or you can choose to do what I'm going to do and not tell anyone. While he's basically monologuing and telling him the whole plot, he's eating the sandwich and drinking the milk. Okay. Right? So at that point, you know he's dead. You know the kid is going to be just fine. Okay? So they completely gave away the ending of the story. You know, like, in, in the, the scene that's supposed to be the most tense in the movie has no impact whatsoever. And there's one thing we're leaving out, Brandon. There's one thing we haven't talked about yet because it kind of pisses me off that they use this as a, a uh, storytelling device. Oh, Wait, are you going to talk about his neighbor? Yes. All right, before you talk about his neighbor, another thing that that, that we kind of left out was why the dad was sleeping with his wife's sister is because his wife was handicapped because of a car accident that we, we are believed was Matt Damon's fault. Right. So Matt Damon was driving. They got into a car accident. She ended up being in a wheelchair. He basically decided, well, you're now an invalid and we can't have sex and I don't want to support you, so we're going to kill well, you. I mean, you can, you can still have sex. It'll just, you know. 
I believe <laughs> she didn't have any con- any muscle control from the waist down. You don't need muscle control. You just got to lay there. Uh, that's gross. And, <laughs> and that would be like fucking a corpse. So, <laughs> that said, I guess we just learned a lot about Brandon. Um, <laughs> you freak. Yeah. So, so, so all that stuff happens, right? But, so you go into this movie, in the very opening of the film, right? This film about a white middle class suburban family that you think is going to be a revenge story. The film opens with a black family moving in. And you're just like, what? Like you I mean, in all of the advertising, you've never seen this black family. You never see any of the black characters whatsoever. Okay. So this black family moves in and it turns out everyone in this community is a fucking racist. Well okay. That would make sense, yeah. During that time, yes, it, it makes it makes a lot of sense, right? So there is this big subplot about how everyone in the neighborhood is trying to make life miserable for this black family so they'll leave, right? And this activity, the, the, the activity of everybody trying to make the black family miserable serves only to distract from what's happening right next door. Or I shouldn't say next door. They're actually back to back. So it's the house behind them, not the house next to them. Right? So the entire racism story exists to distract the majority of the population in the story from what's actually going on in the middle class white suburb house. That's it. That's the only Maybe reason. That's why it's suburban con because they conned you. They also conned you into watching the movie and paying for a ticket and paying for a ticket. Yes, and and you know what? I don't care if it was a <laughs> clever play on words. I I forget I forget what is it an Emmy? Is that what they 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 were going for? I feel like this was like an Emmy. Like he was trying oh, to get it was an Emmy supposed to be like an Oscar bait, an Oscar. Yeah, I feel like it was no. like he was trying to get an Oscar. Yeah, and, and he so missed the mark. Well, like Where you said, the Orient Express could get an Oscar for. I agree. It, not only can it, should it? Yeah, I mean, or, or I, not I, should I, it? I, it should. <laughs> yes, I, I I would agree with that too. Well, you know, I think it would have been a lot more. I think it would have been a lot. I think the subplot should have been toned down a lot more. I agree. That subplot should have been, I mean, just very on the surface. And instead, they kind of delved into it, and you see like how the family is dealing with what's going on, and how people are treating them. And the small child befriends Matt Damon's kid, the one that they're trying to kill. And it just—it's like it's a subplot that doesn't lead anywhere. Okay, and it's pretty gruesome—not not gruesome, but it's pretty, uh, pretty gritty. It's pretty hardcore because like. Ultimately, they end up attacking this family's house. They break windows. They hang a Confederate flag in the window. They set his car on fire. I mean, this is not a nice situation. And this is going on at the same time that Matt Damon ran out of the house and clubbed the insurance agent in the back of the head with a crowbar. No, was it a crowbar or was it a golf club? Oh, no, no. It was was a a golf club. It was a poker from the fireplace, right? Oh, it, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. It was it was a poker from the fireplace. And I, and right? I only saw the trailer. Yeah, beats this dude to death in the in middle the of the street. Nobody the sees it. The whole neighborhood is rioting on the on the black family's house. Yes, you know. So and he just kind of looks around too. Yep. He just kind of looks around. There's no one out because they're all behind his house at the other yeah. family. The whole racism thing serves as a distraction to what was going on. With the middle class white people, yeah, and that really that kind of pissed me off, to to, to be honest. So if I'm gonna to, to tell the truth about it, I mean, they really they could have done anything as a subplot to cause that same type of reaction, and they used something that was like really socially relevant as a as a tool, and it kind of pissed me off. Um, but that said, this movie's a piece of shit. It's it's a terrible movie, although well acted. The story's really fucked up. And it's I mean, bad in some parts. And 
like, now, like I, I haven't seen fire truck. That was just a Deus Ex Machina device yes. to kill off someone. Yeah, and, and that's not uncommon in film. I mean, like, but it was like, blaringly apparent because, yeah. like I said, what fire truck is going to be going that fast and recklessly through a suburban neighborhood? Yes, it was so, super apparent. I don't disagree with you. Before moving uh, on to the to the next subject, I I, I do want to speak up about the racism thing. I mean, even though I haven't seen the movie, you can do things in a good way and in a bad way, even if you're trying to be politically relevant at the time, such as Merlin Orient Express had the racism thing too, and it's oh yeah relevant, and they did it well. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they didn't use the it professor as- was was trying to be super racist, and Daisy Ridley was like. Uh, you know, he's like, well, see, it's like these wines. You don't, you know, you got to keep them separate. That's how it, that's how it should be. And she's like, she just poured them together. She's like, I like a good rosé. Yeah. You know, and. But they it left was, it at that. It was relevant. They left it at that. And it was done tastefully. I think in Suburbicon, it was not tasteful. I think it was kind of offensive the way they did it. Um, And, and, and like you said, like they use a lot of like conveniences a lot of deus ex machina type events to make you believe that this story could happen the way it unfolded um so all in all while it's well acted i'm i'm not even going to say it was well written um what would you give this out of out of 10 a two. <laughs> oh yes a two. It, at best ryan oh definitely a two you know, because like I said, the performances were good. They were okay. The actors did their job. And if, but if it was out of three, the three of us, I think it would be a negative. I think it'd be oh a yeah, negative. if it was just one out of three, it'd be a negative. You're right. Um, because it's just, it's just, it's a glaring. They tried to go for something, and it was a complete misjudgment. Um, and and they they kind of fucked up, and. I'm glad that the movie flopped. I hope it doesn't make any money, and I hope he doesn't do anything like that again. I love you, George Clooney, but you're not doing well so far. Um, so moving on, we're going to go to, uh, and and this is what I meant when I said how this movie ties into the next thing. It's uh, trailers that lie to you. And this is all about how not just the trailers, but marketing campaigns for movies tell you what it is you're going to see but only enough to entice you to go see it. Um, and then you get some films that are just blatant ripoffs, kind of like 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 this one. Um, and Brandon has some opinions on that. So Brandon, I'm gonna let you go ahead. My 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 biggest one is, is, is it's got to be Frozen. I will give you um, going back and watching the trailers. I will give you the fact that the trailers show Elsa's sisters. Uh, sister, sorry, uh, much more than I remember. However, the marketing was entirely Elsa. Um, everyone was loving the song that Elsa sings, uh, so that was on and played a lot, uh, probably overplayed. Uh, all the toys, all the stuff was either the snowman or Elsa or both. Uh, so, uh, so I didn't see this movie in the theater. I saw it way after the fact and when i saw it i just felt very lied to like i saw it i was expecting the movie to be all about elsa and it it just wasn't and i was like this is crap not that it's a bad movie i just didn't enjoy it because i was expecting it to be about elsa and it wasn't so basically your problem is you were expecting a superhero film um and yes you did, you yes didn't get- i was expecting much more magic and cool stuff happening and uh and this is this is an argument that has gone on behind the scenes between me and brandon for quite some time now because i really stupidly loved frozen like like a four-year-old girl loves frozen that is how much you, i like this movie you, you like you like musicals yeah i do like musicals um, but i also and like that has something to do with it that it that well, Idina Menzel is the character or the actress that plays the voice of Elsa, Elsa. and she does the singing. And Idina Menzel is a fucking amazing actress. Uh, I'm sorry, amazing singer. Okay, so that in and of itself was a huge boom to me. But the fact that this was a film where Disney turned its princess trope on its ear and 
it had to do with the act, the one act of true love not being between a man and a woman. I thought that was fantastic. I thought that this character in Anna, Elsa's sister, was really engaging and really just not what n- normal Disney princesses are supposed to be like. It is one of the best things about this movie. In terms I don't of the disagree. Trailer, in terms of the trailers and the and, and the advertising, um, and, and this is the argument that Brandon and I have had, the trailers do not trick you into thinking that the movie is mainly about Elsa. Um, they Martin do show does. they do show lots of Anna, lots of Sven, lots of Olaf. I mean, the trailers give you a good, well-rounded idea of what this movie's going to show you. Well, in a way, now hold on, wait, wait, wait. Now, the rest of it in terms of merchandising, toys, all this other stuff, they focused on the magical aspect of it. I completely see why they would do something like that because that's the thing that's going to make money. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's what the story is going to be about. You saw they sold Snoke toys when uh, Episode 7 of Star Wars came out, and Snoke was not even technically in this film. He was just a hologram. You know, they're going to do what they're going to do to make money. However, the trailers and the advertising for the film, I thought were actually representative of what you got in the theater. Mm. Right. All right. All right. 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 So as, as you guys know, they originally had Elsa cast as the villain of the story. And they did a rewrite after hearing the song and going, Oh, well, Fuck that! We're just gonna make her a good guy and just be misunderstood and not have her know how to do use her powers or whatever. She she was supposed to be the antagonist, and they had to do a re complete rewrite, and it shows. Like, oh, it, it shows in the writing with where, where her parents go and talk to the whatever the trolls, the trolls, the trolls, and the trolls are like, hey, um, you know, love is like, in. Like love her and she and she'll be good and she and she won't be evil and um, she'll be able to learn her, how to use her powers or whatever. And what do they do? They lock, lock her up her in a room. <laughs> that 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 yeah. seems reasonable, right? After they do the opposite of what they just foretold. And yeah. and and then of course you know they they lose the uh, the little brother in the jungle. The little brother. Tarzan. Tarzan. Making a Tarzan reference because the, the... <laughs> they, they, they 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 confirmed it. They confirmed that that's. That they're actually linked. So Tar- Tarzan is their little brother. This is the first I'm hearing of that. And that sounds ridiculous. <laughs> no, it, 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 Brandon's right on the money. I don't disagree. I'm not saying he's not. I'm just saying that's that was a stupid idea. If that's what they did. Um, but but the, that's, so, that's so why the parents weren't around anymore is because yeah. you know they got lost. But what you're saying, uh, Ryan, uh, I, and you're not wrong. Okay, you're not wrong at all. But this movie was originally based on the Ice Queen, and the Ice Queen was the Elsa character, and she was a bad guy in the book. And they turned this story around to make it something because, and you're, and I'm not gonna lie, it 100% has to do with the singing of Idina Menzel. They were like, this song is super popular. People are gonna love it. They're gonna focus on this character. Let's change the story. And I think that was the right decision. I think oh, what yeah. they as far did, as their money, as far as them making money from the from the film, they did just the right from, decision. Not just from a money making standpoint. I thought it was a good movie. I really enjoyed this movie. This movie sucked me in because it, it did not the, give you the, chemo- the chemistry. It has, like you said, it changed the the true love trope between yes. a prince charming and a princess to being between two between the being the bond of two sisters, and right. that turned. Disney Disney movies on its head, right? And I down. really, really loved that. And I think that, but is- that wasn't their initial design. And parts of it show, and that that's oh. what pulled me away from the movie a little bit. But I, I agree. I like I like how it turns the trope upside down. The, the, well, I mean, I, I guess to to get back on point, I mean, that's that wasn't really my issue. My my issue is not within those aspects of the movie because I can agree with all those things. I can even agree that the film itself is a good movie. 
I just didn't like it because of the marketing and the song led me to believe that it was going to be about Elsa. And then when I saw it, it was not. So well, I was just disappointed. And here's the I reason wanted, I, I wanted to see an Elsa movie. Here's the reason I disagree with you so much, though, is because from that same marketing, from that same experience, I didn't feel the way you felt. Um, I went into this thinking, uh, okay, I, I, I take that back. I did think that this movie was going to be centered on the Ice Queen because I knew that the story was originally, originally based on the Ice Queen. But I did, I, when I went into it, I was not disappointed at all about the, how, how the story unfolded. Um, it just, it didn't affect me that way. And I think that's just a difference of how you and I perceived it. Um, well, I mean, it, it, I, I, I agree. And, um, but like I said, for, for me, the bigger part was cause I didn't see it in theaters. Um, I, I had already gotten rid of cable at the time, so I didn't, I didn't see the trailers on TV or anything. Uh, so all I really had to go by was, uh, me and Ryan's friends playing the song over and over and over and over. And of course with the, the song versus. goes, the, the video uh, of, of Elsa doing all this magic. And so I was like, well, you know, I want to, I want to see this. Cause I'm like her doing that ice stuff. I'm like, that's, that's pretty cool. And then I saw some pictures online and of course, you know, Elsa's up front and then, then it's just, it wasn't about her. So like I said, I was disappointed. Not that it's a bad movie. I was just disappointed by it. Well, I think we're just going to have to agree to disagree on this one. But Are there any I, other trailers that you guys can think of? Yes, actually, oh, I, I, this is where I was going to go Thor, with that. Thor lies a little bit uh, yeah. because they, they show him with two glowing eyes, uh, and we know that that's that not the case at the end of the movie. Because that was a deliberate mislead. Um, but it has to be. Uh, oh, I, let, I me, let me rephrase that. Let me rephrase that. If they're going to include that scene, it has to be. They could they have need, left that scene out. Yeah, they didn't need to include that scene. And and that's kind of how I feel. Um, and we're going to talk about Thor here in a minute. But because um, <laughs> we had we had some issues uh, when we talked about it last time. But there was actually a movie, and I could be getting the name wrong because, of course, I'm blanking out on everything today. I think it was called The Secret Garden. And... The how did that lie? Ad, the ad, the advertising and the trailer was about this kid and this kind of fantasy world that he lived in and how he was going to go on this adventure and that is what kind of you expected going into the movie and then I entirely disagree on that. Okay, maybe maybe I'm wrong about the name of the movie. Maybe I'm, it, it could be a different. No, 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 no. You're you're right. I mean, but the movie is about a fucking kid that's dying. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, he's not dying. Is. Yeah, he is. No, he's not. He dies at the end of the movie. What the hell version of Secret Garden did you watch? I'm not sure we're talking about the same movie. Hold the on. Bootleg yeah. version. You got it off Craigslist. No, 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 no. I need Secret to Garden is about a boy who is essentially crippled and disabled. He thinks he's dying, and then to uh, I think I think it's his cousins or something go to live with him, and they bring this garden because he's super rich or well not him but his family's super rich and they have a, like a castle so to speak they find this garden and they bring it back to life by taking care of it and actually doing stuff and they get him to come out and him getting outside and involved in this actually essentially brings him back to life and he actually gets out of his wheelchair and gets better yeah we're not we're not talking about the same movie hold on I Not only did they, they, they bring a garden brand in, but they also brought a lot of LSD. <laughs> um, I mean, have... the, the, the Secret Garden's been made... I've seen at least two or three versions of it. Yeah, th then that's not what I'm talking about. Um, and I'll have to look it up because I don't remember the name of the movie. I couldn't tell you who's in it. Uh, I just remember that... An another one... Like... Go ahead. Uh, so another trailer that... I, I would say that lied a little was uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one, because it shows. I don't remember which trailer it was. I, I I couldn't say if it's one, two, three, or or just a teaser or whatever. Uh, it shows them in space, and it shows the collector <laughs> flying a spaceship. 
that's just a scene that was shot and uh, ultimately edited from the movie. I don't think that's well, necessarily why? misleading. Because whatever that scene involved didn't move the story forward in the eye of the, the production crew and the director and the editor, whatever. So they decided it needed to remain on the editing floor. Yeah, and that happens a lot. Yeah. You see scenes that don't, don't end up in the movie. I don't think, and that, I don't think that is a deliberate lie. Yes. Or, or a misdirection from what the plot of the story will be. Now, well, go ahead, go, go ahead, Brandon. I'm gonna say I, I wouldn't say it's a deliberate lie. I was just like I was wanting to see that that part of it because like I saw them introduce the collector in the Guardians, and then I'm like, all right, well, where, where's the scene when he's gonna like be flying a ship and doing stuff, and it just didn't happen. I mean, guard, don't get me wrong, Guardians was fucking great, but I, so, I was hoping to see that scene. Ultimately, doing it in the head of a of a dead celestial was pretty damn cool. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool too. Um, however. I want to talk about a movie that's coming up that we're seeing a lot of advertising for that I think is doing this exact same thing. And that is The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is trying to get us to believe that Rey is going to fight and possibly strike down Luke. And I do not think that is the case. They're trying to get us to believe that she's going to turn to Kylo Ren for guidance. And I do not think that is the case. I think they are doing a lot of misdirection in this, the, in the trailers and the advertising that they are giving us. And I am not cool with that. I see. I disagree. Oh, I, I disagree about being cool with it. I, I agree that they're intentionally trying to mislead you because I think they're doing it so that you can't guess what's actually going to happen. And that I'm actually cool with. I want to be surprised. I'm okay with them not revealing much of the story. I'm not okay with them feeding us a false story. I, I, I don't think that they're feeding a, a, a false story because – because obviously, you know, scenes are cut up and edited. It's presented yeah. in a way that I and, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to. Well, no, I'm not going to even really say it delicately. I think if you're just dumb enough to go by exactly what's in the trailer, you're going to you're you're, you're going to be really disappointed. Yes, I, I agree. And I think not to be dismissive or insulting. I think that is the majority of the movie going audience especially the new fans to Star Wars, people that haven't been following it for years. Well, I, it is a little upsetting to me that they are trying to purposely mislead people's assumptions, but they just could not just show that. Just don't show the stuff in the trailer then. Exactly. Everyone's going to see this goddamn movie. Now, now at the same time, though, there has been articles and other things that have led me to believe that she may, for a brief... I'm not saying she's going to strike down Luke, because that I don't think is going to happen, but she may, for a brief time, go dark, and Kylo may come back, because they refer to Daisy and Kylo as the protagonists. And, you know, I'm not sure about that either. I know exactly what you're talking about. In that first full-length trailer we got, Snoke is talking about someone, and it is assumed to be Kylo Ren, but then they cut to a picture of Daisy. Then you got Luke talking about someone. It is assumed to be – I am I said Daisy. I meant Ray. It's assumed to be Ray, and then they show – they cut to a picture of Kylo Ren. So – and that kind of stuff I'm okay with. The part where uh, uh, Ray is standing up with her, her lightsaber drawn, and – Luke is on the ground going, this is not going to go how you think. I, that, to me, is not that, – that's not representative of what we're going to see in the film. The part where she says, I need someone to guide me and show me what my place is and all this, and you see Kylo Ren extending his hand, I don't think that's representative of the film. And you saw how I reacted to that trailer. I geeked the fuck out. I thought it was so crazy when I saw it. Um, and if that's what happens, I'm probably going to geek the fuck out again. <laughs> But I don't think that's what's going to happen. No, no, I, I, I don't think that's going to happen either. Um, but, but like I said, I, I think that Kylo is going to, maybe not even in this movie, but I think he's going to actually come back to the light because I can't see why they would refer to Kylo as a protagonist. I don't know if Kylo can come back from killing Han, man. <laughs> well, man why would I, they refer 
refer to him as a protagonist, not the anti. I understand what you're saying, but still, I don't know if he can come back from that. He doesn't have to come back all the way. I'm not talking about coming to the light side. I'm talking about coming back as a character where people are going to accept him. He killed off one of the most beloved characters in this saga. Not, not even I, just the saga. Just he could die. In, in, in friggin' sci-fi, period. And you know what? If he died, I'd be okay with that. I don't think he can come back from killing Han Solo. He could pull an Anakin. He could come and back it, and then die. What if, what if he saves Luke? It'd be too convenient, and it'd be too reminiscent of the previous story, which what people accuse the first movie of being, and I don't want that. I want this to go in a different direction. All right. Well, I mean, I, I, it, it is what it is. I mean, I, I'm, I'm super excited to see it, but I just... So, uh, yeah, so am I. I'm, I'm going to see it more than it's, more. It's, sure. it's, it, it's just, I, I still, like, it's little little things that I read, just... I want to know where it's going. And and now they're doing a, a 10, 11, and 12. Yeah. Um, well, my opinion about 10, 11, and 12 is it's, it's I think the Skywalker storyline is going to end here in, in this trilogy. Unless, unless Ray, and I don't know she is, but unless it's revealed that Ray is a Skywalker, God, you know, you her story. Point, into the at, others at this point i hope she's not i really hope she's not a skywalker um because there's so much more to the star wars universe that could be explored i think it's time to let the skywalker saga come to its end to come to its conclusion you know they're always going to be a meaningful chapter in the star wars universe but I think it's time for them to explore other stuff. I yeah, we, really we, don't want them to go on with the Skywalkers. We always get caught. It seems like the fan base, and I mean, I'm guilty of it, and I'm sure you guys are too, get caught up with the whole prophecy. Right. The whole prophecy about Anakin and then, then Luke. And it's tied around the, the, the well, Skywalker the, the, family. The, the prophecy has, uh, has I mean, a little bit to do with Luke, but it's really just Anakin because he did – Bring balance to the force, just as Darth Vader. Right when he when he ends up killing the Emperor, um, and well, I and I, why wasn't there? All right, that that bringing balance to the force is arbitrary. It's super. Well, that's arbitrary. the prophecy. That's the prophecy was that so he would bring balance, and so, he did. He fulfilled the prophecy. Go ahead, Ryan. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I. Don't know. I I just, I just think that it's arbitrary to say, oh, he brought balance to the force. So what? There was always only since Darth Bane, there was supposed to be only the rule of two that, in the Sith. Darth Bane is not a character. He was oh, canon until wrong. Disney bought it. Wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa! And in they bring Star him back Wars, in Star Wars Rebels. They reference Darth Bane, and it's not a major thing, but they brought him back, and Rebels is canon. So Darth Bane exists in canon. Now, whether exist. or not, yeah, well, whether, whether or not his not. story exists, that's a whole other thing. Yeah, whether they keep the story or not, but those three books were damn good, and it made me love Darth Bane that much more. But anyway, that's that's you know not that's pertinent, right? <laughs> but the rule of two says there's the 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 master and the apprentice. And if there was a master on the light side, Yoda and Luke, then there we already had balance. Wait, what? <laughs> the balance was between the light and the dark, not... Yeah. Well, it, it, the, the balance is also between the number of users using the Force on either I side. Dis I disagree I, on the yeah, number of users. I can't agree I, on that. I'm sorry. I, I would say that it has to do with an actual power balance. Um, if you have someone who is super strong and a really weak character, and then you have three moderately <laughs> strong characters, that's balanced. Yeah, if you had two really super strong characters on one side and no strong characters on the other, that's obviously out of balance. Um, but then, I, it, then if we're going to get into a whole DBZ-esque argument about power level because... <laughs> <laughs> And, and it's going to make it kind of moot. It's well, like, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that part later. Because 
we don't see any power. Uh, we don't see any extreme uses of power in the movies in the franchise like you get in the video game series, like with um, Star oh, Killer. That that is entirely false because in Episode Seven is where you see the friggin' ex- start. You start seeing the extreme stuff. A lot of people called Kylo Ren weak. That is entirely not true. One, he stopped the blaster with the Force and held it there yeah. while talking. I I I've never seen that game. before. And then number two, you saw, and and everyone knows that Chewbacca's bowcaster is insanely powerful. He shoots a stormtrooper and it knocks like two of them like twenty feet back. He shoots Kylo. Kylo only takes a knee. Does he even do yeah. that? True. I I no, no, he did. that he, Kylo he, is really powerful. He, he he held his side, took a knee, and then got back up and was all right. I'm now I'm gonna fight. Yeah, and and I'm I'm not disagreeing with you. I think there there are examples of really powerful. Uh, of it. And I think what Ryan's uh, trying to reference is like in in Force Unleashed. Uh, the Force Unleashed when Star Killer pulls a fucking star destroyer out of orbit. Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah, yes, you're in right. terms of the original trilogy, you don't see any extreme. I mean, other than force lightning. Yeah, you're you're right. We never saw anything super extreme like that. The things we did see was a old, frail character like Yoda being able to effortlessly raise a ship out of the swamp, to effortlessly stop a cave from crumbling and falling on other Jedi and killing them. Um, there were hints of power. Um, we've never seen any extreme uh, examples of that use of power. I think we're going to get that in this trilogy. Oh, I certainly oh, yeah. hope so. And I really want to see Luke wreck shit. Yes. And, and, and to, to go back to what Brandon was saying, when he stops that laser bolt in the air and holds it there, that's something we've never seen before. That is... By far, in my opinion, the most extremely powerful use of the force we've ever seen on screen. Yeah. Right. So I he hoping... does it, he does it and he does other things and he takes care of other shit and he's still holding that bolt in his right. mind mm-hmm. without, without putting his hand up or doing any kind of like bullshit like that. He's not continuously like all right, kill everybody now. Yeah. And he's just using around. his mind. Right. Yeah. Um and I think we're going to get more of that. I hope we're going to get more of that. And to agree with you, Brandon, I want to see Luke Skywalker wreck shop. I have a dream scenario in my mind that I don't want to get into here because it's just going to derail us. And make oh, us yeah, for very, very, very much so. <laughs> so, but but I'll, I'll talk to you about that later. Um, but uh, we're, we're going to go ahead and move on from this because it's just, there's just the, the idea is the marketing really needs to be representative of what the film is going to show you without giving away too much. And I think that's not too much to ask. I think they've done it in the past and I think they've just, they've swung too far to the other side into showing you uh, either showing you exactly what's going to happen or making you think one thing is going to happen in order to, to, to quote unquote shock you in the film, which, you know, really isn't necessary. Um, So that being said, we are going to talk about Thor Ragnarok some more because last week we had some issues with the cast and the the, uh, the conversation sort of got uh, truncated. So we're going to kind of recap uh, what we thought and cover some of the things that we didn't. Uh, if you saw last week or, or if you didn't see last week, rather, uh, I should say I am the dissenting voice here. I did not like this movie. I was really unhappy about it. Uh, not to say Has it, it changed. Was- I haven't seen it again yet. Okay. Um, uh, I've seen it twice now. And uh, as of my second screening, I was still unhappy with this film. I thought the tone of the film was way off. I thought it was just, I thought it was a parody of itself. And I I was really unhappy. That being said, it's not a bad movie. It's not a bad movie by any stretch of the imagination. And and Brandon, I'll let you go ahead and take it from here. Um, well, you know, like like I said last week, I, I really loved it. I, I loved the, the douchebaggery. I loved the comedy. I loved the action. I loved seeing Thor wreck shop. Uh, I, I loved pretty much everything about the movie. Um, we, was, was a couple of things that we didn't really, or at least I didn't get to talk about last week was uh, Scourge was one. Uh, I Honestly, I don't know if I just 
was blind during the trailers uh, or if he just wasn't in them to to speak <laughs> of but I was surprised by who played him I was like I was like oh shit that's bones right <laughs> um so Scourge, the, the, who he's talking about, is the character that takes over for Heimdall once Heimdall is outed by Odin, who is actually Loki. Um, and uh, I actually, I, I said something, and I, and I believe I'm, I was wrong about this when I said it, even though you guys pointed it out. Uh, I said that he had the vision of uh, Heimdall. I don't think that is the case anymore. Um, you know, I, I think you're right. I think the technology is what allowed him to see what was going on, not the vision that Heimdall has. Uh, which relates to whether or not Heimdall has this, the, the soul stone in him, but that's a whole nother conversation. Um, but uh, uh, I, I thought he was a interesting character. I thought he got too little screen time uh, to develop who he was because he really was the kind of person he was almost like, and, and being how much I love the series I'm about to reference, I think this says a lot. I think he was almost like Malcolm Reynolds in Firefly in the sense that he always put himself on the side that was going to come out on top as opposed to Malcolm Reynolds, who had a sense of right and wrong. This guy didn't. Um, yeah. I was going to say, cause Malcolm wouldn't execute anyone. No, but he always put himself in the position to, to, to come out ahead, to come out forward. Um, except and this guy, brown coats, except when he, well, that was where his quote unquote failings were. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but this guy was just, he was an opportunist. He was just kind of like, well, whoever's in power is the person I'm going to serve. Yeah. He had an extreme self-interest. Right. Yeah. And, and, and if you don't get the reference, Ryan, cause I, I, I don't know if you're the one of the people who hasn't seen it in our D and D group, but Firefly is Malcolm yeah. Reynolds. Yeah. Okay, well, I've, okay. I've seen Firefly. Then it's Mark. Then it, uh, I, <laughs> it's Mark. It's Mark who hasn't seen it. Mark hasn't seen a lot. Um, but uh, so so that character, I think, like the way they used him, I think he could have done a lot more. I think he could have been a lot. Uh, there there could have been a lot more development as to who he was and why he did the things he did. But the way he was portrayed in the film, he was just kind of like a two dimensional. Well, this is the way things are going now. So this he is how. Reminded I'm- me of Cord. But less funny, and he didn't really serve a purpose to the story. He I mean, at least got his redemption at the end. Yeah, and I was I was glad about that. I was glad, you know, like when he finally turns and and decides to help them. I was like, well, you know, at least he went out on top. <laughs> and you know? even though he was going to do it, I was actually I did like that he really, really did not want to execute the person. He's like. Please, someone say something so I don't have to do this. Right, but it showed. I think that actually showed how spineless he was. Well, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, granted, but it gave him more of a moral compass. Yeah, you showed that there was. He was. He wasn't completely bad, but he was definitely all about himself. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and and I mean that's why he was helping Loki. Right. I really don't think there's a whole lot more to say about that. Um, something that we had talked about before things went south in the last episode um, was the fight between Thor and Hulk. Which, which between, Thor won. Thor and Hulk. Uh, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> Thor and Hulk. The fight between Thor and Hulk was excellent. I thought it was really good. I think it was something that everybody's been waiting to see since the first Avengers. Okay. Um <laughs> I don't think there was a definitive winner in this film. I will say after the fight is over, Thor is depicted as being unconscious. Hulk is not. That's However, true, but that's because he was, he had that device in his neck and it was used on him to make him. I disagree because the very last thing we see in the fight is Hulk coming down to punch Thor. Thor raises his hand and catches his fist. Then the screen goes black. We don't know what happened after he caught his fist. And we all know Thor is completely capable of stopping Hulk's punches because he did it in the first Avengers. No, no, he is, but he might not be capable of it when he's being electrocuted or whatever it is. 
I, 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 don't, I don't necessarily know if electrocuted the right word because, I mean, Thor is the god of thunder. I think it's probably yeah. more some kind of nano bots or whatever. Because well, the same well, kind of device was used on, on Hulk and Planet Hulk, and it's not Hulk out. My point is, while everything you are saying is correct, we don't know what happened. We were not. I, I'm kind of trying to get at the fact that we don't have a definitive answer as to who won the fight. I don't think that scene says Hulk is the winner, or I'm sorry, that Thor is the winner. No, it doesn't. However, what I, I, I what, like I brought up in our last conversation about, and I think Ryan will agree here, Thor got the better hits in. He did great in that fight. Oh yeah! And until he got electrocuted, he was dominating at that point. Uh, okay, yes, I, I will say that. He, so, if we were going to score this like a boxing match, okay, in the first few rounds, Thor had all of the winning hits. He he was ahead by points. Hulk does come back, and he Loki's him, as I like to call it, when he smacks him around uh, by the feet. And he ends up uh, making this giant leap and coming down to hit Thor. And I think the assumption was supposed to be that Hulk knocked Thor out. And I don't think that's the case. I what do you what do you what do you think, Ryan? I mean, I I I think I because they don't show the quote unquote knockout knockout. I'm gonna have to go by points and say Thor won that fight. Okay. All right. I think Hulk would have won that fight just because of pure power. Um, I love, I love Thor and I love seeing Thor fight, fight the Hulk, but Thor doesn't have his, Thor doesn't have a fully developed Odin force or Thor. That's true. And because they took elements from planet Hulk, which is what leads into world war Hulk, where Hulk becomes world breaker Hulk in like, destroys shit like he becomes the most powerful version of hulk that we've seen in the comics from the end of planet hulk yes you you i know you've read planet hulk did you read world war hulk yep no i didn't read world war hulk no, no i did and yeah he he is on par with thanos at that point in terms of brute strength yeah it's ridiculous his power level and it's and because it's- of what happened at the end of of World War of no of um, Planet Hulk, where he gets married and whatever, and has a, like family, and then hit the spaceship that 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 Tony Stark sent him on explodes and kills his wife, and then he gets super pissed. Yeah, he he really quote unquote hulks out. Okay, and one of the things that and and I think I understand this from a film uh, filmmaking standpoint is one of the things about the Hulk is his de- the defining thing about his power is the angrier he gets, the stronger he gets. And they can't show that because they don't want, they want to right. restrict how much power they, sh- he, they show in the films. Well, well they with, have with, to with, with one exception, at least in the comics, because sad Hulk is stronger. I can't speak to that. Neither can I. I I'm talked not... about this, Ryan. Me, you, and Steven. Um, so the Hulk got sad in the comics at at one point, and he's like, "Please don't make me or like, to, please don't make me sad. You won't like it." And he does, and he actually, the Hulk turns into a like another being and is way stronger than the Hulk. Oh, 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 oh. I know, I know, I I I know where you're where you're going with this, um, but in terms of power i think that the world war i mean the comment section can correct me if i'm wrong that world war hulk and it shows like the most powerful version of the hulk so far yeah that's that's i I can't speak to sad hulk i'm not familiar with that whole storyline so um i'll have to take your word for it on that one but um so but that's that. That's uh, something. Yeah, back back to back to Ragnarok. <laughs> you know, so so the whole. Yeah. Anyway, I think the fight is kind of moot to to determine a winner, because from a filmmaking standpoint, they can't show, or they want to limit how much they show. Yeah, and I'm getting angry because it's going to upset fans. 
Yeah, they didn't want us to have a definitive winner because they want that rivalry to keep going. And it's way uh-huh. funnier to see them bitching oh, no. at each yes. other about for, for sure. oh, me just... raging fire, you like little fire. Yes, smoldering fire, right? Um, so 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 that was I, I thought that was by far the best Hulk action. Uh, or I, I take that back. The best Hulk Thor action we've gotten on screen. I still think the best Hulk action is when he hulks out in New York City in the first Avengers. And punches the shit out of that Leviathan? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think that was, I mean, it may not show his strength as much as this movie did, but I think the way it impacted the story was much more intense. Um, but uh, th- so then we, we, there were certain characters that we didn't talk about, like Valkyrie. Um, yeah, that's true. We we did forget about Valkyrie last. I week. really liked the character of Valkyrie. I did not like the forced romantic tension between the two of them. I I like the character that they have in the movie. I disagree with just calling her Valkyrie. I guess she was a Valkyrie, right? Because. So in, in the movie, they it, it, in her flashback, uh, her leader with the blonde hair, mm-hmm. that's supposed to be Valkyrie. V Valkyrie, right. Um, but uh, she is the only one that survived that battle with her. Oh, yeah, no, for, for, for sure. I mean, I, I, I get all that, and I'm fine with it. I, I Like I said, I was just... I was expecting the character to be more like the comic. And it wasn't, which is fine. I understand changes, and I'm cool with changes. That it was just, I was just hoping differently, and maybe I, I was kind of hoping that they might have called her a little differently, other than just Valkyrie. Just Valkyrie, right? Well, I think the idea was uh, Thor was supposed to be kind of fanboying out about the fact that she was a Valkyrie, the same way Agent Coulson fanboyed over Captain. America okay. in in the Avengers, and it just didn't work out that way. Um, it, it didn't have that kind of uh, oomph. It wasn't as funny as his was. And when they tried to make it a romantic thing, that just did not work for me at all. As a character, I, was, I thought she was badass. I was okay with the romance because I did not like Jane at all in the previous two movies. Just because it's a better, everything's a better love story than fucking uh, sparkly vampire werewolf movie. Oh, but um, it's still a better romance uh, love story than Twilight. Twilight, yes, you know. But just because it's better than Twilight doesn't make it good. I didn't say it was oh. better than Twilight. I'm talking about Jane. Fucking. Oh wait, is, so you don't think know. it was better than Twilight? <laughs> I think it obviously is better than Twilight, but I I think <laughs> the 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 spark and romance between. Valkyrie and him, I think they suit each other better than he and Jane from Thor 1 and 2. If you wanted to go that route, I would say Lady Sif was the best match for Thor, who wasn't even in this movie, by the way. True, which Um, I'm actually glad for because they killed the rest of them. Right. Um, So Lady Sif is out there somewhere. They did the call to arms and she was washing her hair at the time. (laughs) <laughs> she, you know, she, she, she could quite possibly end up being back in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and helping them escape from space. Yeah, possibly. Um, uh, which is something I'm going to have to catch up on. when. She, that's I mean, she could have been off planet. I mean, off Asgard. Well, we know she's off Asgard. We know she she's off Asgard, it. but like, where was she? Like, No mention of her whatsoever. There's no... Well, I don't think there needs to be. They showed the rest of them, and the rest died because oh, she's man. not there. Okay, so uh, what the hell's his name? The guy that's like Robin Hood, played by Zachary Levi. Yeah. I don't uh, remember his name either, but I, I, well, either way, I think people should know who we're talking yeah. about. He dies like a bitch in this movie. Most of them die like a bitch. I did oh, hell not up? like the way they killed him off. What's that? Oh, you mean he died, the one who died from Hella, like kind of... The yeah, they, they all they all died from hell. They all died from the, hell. The, only, the, the one who put up the, the best fight was up. was the the Asian guy. I don't yes. remember his name. Um, He's the one who put up the best fight out of all of them. Yeah, other than that, they kind of went out like bitches, and it was just like what? And like these guys are supposed to be, you know, the Warriors Three, the baddest of the bad, next to Thor, you know. And 
and they just went out like that. Uh, oh, I just I didn't like it. I did not like that at all. Um, some other things. Why did I didn't overwhelming like. Thor. Uh, other than him going like Raiden. But at least Thor put up a fight. These yeah. guys didn't put up a fight at all. I don't think they were well prepared. I don't think they knew who they were going up against. Because that's true as well. They they probably thought that they, they were probably like, I don't really need to go full force. This is just some some chick. I'm gonna mm. gonna knock her out now. Oh shit, I'm know. dead. So there was, a, and I think we talked about this in the last show, and I don't remember whether or not this made it onto the one that actually aired. But like they had that moment where Hella shows up and she's about to wreck shop. And the Asgardian army is like, well, who the fuck are you? Like, you know, like, like it was supposed to be this funny moment that didn't work. Yeah. I felt um, the same way. And I felt that it kind of fell flat and it diminished her badassery. Right. Yes. Like, like, you know, they built her up and then suddenly this, this fucking regimental soldier from nowhere was like, well, who the hell are you? And why should we care? And she goes, Oh, well, didn't she just listen? Yeah. Um, and and like that that's the kind of stuff i didn't like about this movie um i just thought that over the overall tone of the film didn't suit the entire the, the ragnarok story um i thought i'm okay with it i i love the comedy aspect um i'm gonna see it again after i see justice league watch um, what we do in the dark first and then and and then, and then i see what we do in the dark i love I know, it. i'm just saying watch that again before yeah ragnarok and then there's and, and, all right. What, I, what 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 we do in the dark? Yeah. So before we before Thor came out, I actually mentioned this. Um, the director that made Thor directed a movie called What We Do in the Dark, and it's fucking hilarious. What we do in the shadows, I think. Oh yeah, you're right. What we do in the shadows. Um, and uh, before seeing the movie, I was really excited about the fact that Taika Waititi was directing this film because I wanted to see that comedy mixed in with the gravity of Thor and what I feel happened is that comedy just kind of took over Thor and made Thor a parody of himself and that's what I that's my biggest complaint about this movie um, and, I feel and well I feel like the Thor movies had a, a had a serious weight to them that the other Marvel movies don't really that never really carried along with them and the comedy that Taiko Watiti brought in <laughs> more mirrored what Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, and Ant Man tried doing with, but with in those bringing movies, comedy into it. It was balanced. I don't think it was balanced in this movie. I think the the, the uh, scales tip heavily in favor of comedy over over the dramatic tension. Well, and, and, what dramatic tension did you have in Ant Man? They fought on a giant uh, on a on a train set in his daughter's room okay. and it showed the train going choo choo when i say this it's going to sound stupid <laughs> because of the words i'm using not because of the actions <laughs> okay he 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 bonded with antony the one ant that he rode that, that flew and and rescued him and all this other stuff and Korg okay. saved Doug even though he almost stepped on him and antony gets shot and in that moment, I was like, oh, my God, they just killed Anthony. And I was mad. And I was like, dude, go kill him. <laughs> that moment, as silly as it sounds when describing it, an ant getting shot, had weight to it. And it affected me as a viewer. And it made me more invested in the story as to you know what was going to happen going forward. I wanted him to kick Yellow Jacket's ass because he just killed Anthony. I didn't get any of that from Thor. There was nothing that happened in Thor. Even when they killed the Warriors 3, I, like I said, they kind of went out like bitches it, and it wasn't really impactful. It was just kind of like, it was kind of like that scene in uh, fucking Revenge of the Sith where the Emperor kills off three Jedi like they weren't even standing there. You know? Um, that just kind of pissed me off. I don't think it's the right portrayal of it. And that is why I, I, I just... I, this whole movie just didn't sit well with me. And I am going to watch it again. I'm going to see it again to make sure that I'm not just butthurt about the fact that it's more of a comedy than it is an action. But I don't think it's going to change my opinion at this point. All right. Well, what's what do we have next? Okay. All right. So there's uh, one thing I just want to kind of go on a rant on. Uh, and this will be very quick. 
the reviews for Justice League are out. And God damn it, I'm so angry because they're trying to portray it as the majority of critics slamming this movie, right? And the critics that they cited just were bitching about the dumbest, most contradictory shit that pissed me off. So, like, they complained about the fact that um, this movie... So they they didn't okay. Let, let me take a step back. They didn't just complain about Justice League. They're complaining about the DC EU as a whole, and they just went into it wanting to hate on the DC EU. And I think they carried that forward onto Justice League because Justice League is a much more lighthearted film than any of the other DC EU films were. And I'll tell you, I liked uh, Man of Steel. Um, I did not hate Batman versus Superman the way it was, even though it's probably a, the worst rendition of that particular story. I have a question. Can I come up? Go ahead. You said that they they thought it was more lighthearted than other DC movies so far. No, no, no. I'm saying it is more lighthearted, and, no, and I'm no. getting. Well, what, what did the critics say about it being lighthearted? They were was... they were bitch. And, and let, let me get to my point, and I'll explain. This is all going to come together. <laughs> Okay, so they were complaining about the fact that this movie is, uh, and this is why I actually took a step back. They were complaining about the DCEU as a whole. Um, They call it joyless. They call it too dark. They call it, you know, not fun, right? And a lot of the time what they're saying is, is the DCEU is not like the MCU. It's not fun to watch. Um, And I don't necessarily have a problem with that. I'm okay with these darker storylines in the DCEU, but Zack Snyder, who has been at the helm of a lot of these films for a while now, had to depart from Justice League. And when that happened, unfortunately, because what happened was his daughter killed herself um, and he wanted to step back and take time with his family. And I think that's completely commendable. Um, But when that happened they were also in the midst of trying to course correct because so many people were complaining about the dark tone of the dceu so they brought in joss whedon what did joss whedon make joss whedon made avengers one and two these very good superhero movies that were lighthearted and funny so you have this dark tone mixed in with the levity that joss whedon brings into it and now they're bitching about that they're complaining that it's uh a poor attempt at replicating what the Avengers and what Marvel has done when before they were complaining that the movies weren't enough like Marvel and the Avengers. And it's just, it's kind of like, shut the fuck up. You're like, you're contradicting yourself. You don't even know what you're saying. Get, go into this movie and just watch it for what it is and then make, you know, a judgment. Don't try to say this movie isn't what I wanted it to be or isn't what it should have been. Because that's the kind of stuff that I did like with Star Trek because I'm a fucking fanboy of Star Trek, right? Um, I didn't like the way they treated Star Trek and that's what pissed me off about it. This movie is a reversal of what they've been complaining about so far and now they're complaining about the reversal and I think it's just bullshit and I think people should just watch it and make their judgments on their own merits on, on their own experience with the film and not what these asshole career critics have been uh, doing. Well, and I'm not and, saying and, all and some of them, some of them honestly don't know what the hell they're talking about either because they don't know the characters. Uh, like for example, I have a friend who was complaining about the trailers and he's like, all of Flash's jokes are stupid. It's too, too, too lighthearted and too stupid. I'm like, that's the flash man. Yeah, that's that's the way the character is, you know, and that's why Marvel has been so successful, in my opinion, particularly with the Avengers, because the people that made the movies had a reverence for the source material. They didn't stick to the source stories. A lot of people had some complaints about that, but the source material, the source characters, they understood who these characters were and they applied the characters to a slightly different scenario, slightly different reality. These characters are now coming in more true to form. And even Brandon, you complained about Batman about it's like, well, Batman doesn't kill. Well, Batman originally he did kill. Um, since they essentially rebooted the universe, doesn't. 
Well, it's the thing. The point is, is it doesn't follow the same continuity as the comic books at the time, and Marvel's doing the same thing, right? And what, kind of the, the, even so, no. Even if you look at the current continuity of Ragnarok's completely person- different. No, no. The the stories are different, yes, but the characters are essentially the same kind of personality that they have. The, it, the you make it more, they, have. they amplify the more the more real realness, real realness. I know. Um, like like the Flash, the Flash thinks faster than other people, and he in the comic book he he is more quick witted and more prone to making jokes or or whatever. The version they're showing in the new mo- in the Justice League is a more realistic version. The way that he talks, he, he, oh no, for, get, for sure, and, 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 and I'm, 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 fi- I'm fine with that in the trailer. My my issue is, is that regardless of current story or what story they want to go with, even if it's for Batman versus Superman, was the fact that the current Batman going back. Years now, even doesn't kill, and he did just shot people. Now, granted, maybe, maybe you know, 20 30 years ago, Batman killed people, okay, fine, but he doesn't anymore. And the universe has been rebooted since in but the comics, granted. In the story that we're presented with in the movies, different events have occurred differently than they have in the comic book. And, and I also just have a problem with Ben Affleck. Oh, I, 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 I like Ben Affleck. I just, I, 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 like like I told Jose, like I told Jose, I can see him as a Batman. I don't see him as the prime universe Batman. Well, he's not the prime universe Batman. At least I don't assume he is. That's what they're calling this is the prime universe. Yep. (laughs) Choices can, in their they, words make a difference. The choices that they say outside of the movie is stupid, and they've been doing that a lot. But those those words and, and things that they decide to use make a difference. Now, if they never said any of that, like I told Jose, I was like, this is actually fine then, because I'm under the assumption then that this is not the Prime Universe, and that that's actually a fine thing to have then. I'm cool with it. Because unlike a lo- Prime Universe, I'm like, that's bullshit. Because my 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 opinion is probably not a very popular one because everyone loves Chris Nolan Batman. Everyone loves Chris Nolan Batman. Oh, I I, I, I liked the I first two. I tolerated Chris Christopher Nolan's Batman because I hated his voice and I love what they're doing. <laughs> well, I his love, voice is realistic. Listen, what they're doing in the new in the new Batman is way more realistic to have it electro- electronically modified. For a guy who has the most awesome technology and has a fucking bat wing, he can't digitally alter his voice. He has to speak deeper because no, oh, it, 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 he's not, I, have I don't to, see he's not even speaking warrior. deeper. That's what people aren't even thinking of. Literally, if you if you push back on some of your 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 you not your ugula. <laughs> hey, you know what he should have done? He should have put it uh, on and said, "Hey, man, you're, you're this, Adam's apple. this hurts my throat. Uh, redesign the cow." He could. He's like, oh, hold, on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. But you guys are arguing. Wait, you guys are arguing over the reality of how they would alter his voice in a universe where Superman puts on glasses and no one knows who he is. Yeah, I know. I realize. I realize. It's stupid. <laughs> I realize it's stupid. And no, no, they they explain that in the comics at least. They explain that in the comics at least that he has a, essentially some kind of magical power. I know it's not actual magic because he doesn't have magic, but it's some kind of mind trick, so to speak, that makes people forget. Okay, we're not talking about the comics though. We're talking about the no, movies. I, I know. I know. <laughs> so, but, however, however, that being said, to, to to try to get back on point. I liked Man of Steel. Batman vs Superman was okay. I hated Suicide Squad. I was a pile yeah. of garbage. Okay, I'm not going to disagree with you that Suicide was a bad film. I still had fun watching it. Uh, I, I did too. not. I had I, the fun that you watch and the fun that you have when you watch bad movies. Yeah, it, it was. I was still 
okay with I, I still had a good time in the theater with what I saw. Was it good? No, no, it was not by any stretch of the imagination. Um and but, Wonder Woman was wonderful. Wonder Woman was great, but I still think Man of Steel was a better movie. Wonder Woman was just more engaging and had a wider appeal. All right, all right. I, I'm on the opposite. I, I think Wonder Woman was the better movie. Man of Steel was more enjoyable because you actually got to see Superman. Be Superman. Superman. Mm, I don't know. I disagree. Um, because, all right, all right, Ryan, I mean, what were you going to say? All right. What I'm going to say is hearkening back to a little bit of what Jose was talking about with the critics' opinion and how the, comparing it to Marvel and whatever bullshit that they're doing. Um, I felt like Wonder Woman actually had a lot more humor than people were giving it credit for after like after months at months after seeing it people uh, uh, i was laughing in a lot of parts in wonder woman like whenever they're on the boat talking about sex and shit like i was yeah. laughing that uh, d- during that conversation and that conversation yes. was like oh man that that's that's pretty lighthearted. and then and- whenever they were in the baths or whenever what's his name was in the bath um on the island like, what's that yeah, she's like, what's that? And you expect, him, oh, it's talking about his penis because you've never seen a penis before. <laughs> no, it's watch. And um, I thought that was funny. Yeah, the movie had a lot of humor in it, and it was appropriate humor. It was things that you would expect to experience if that character was a real person. It wasn't forced. Yeah, it was, and, and, that's, and that's the kind of humor that you kind of get in Marvel movies, like with Ant-Man. And, and and guardians i'm willing to bet that's the kind of humor we're going to get in justice league and i think that's what they're bitching about and that's where i have issue um so they love I have wonder a feeling, woman but they don't like in justice league they're they're assholes right i have a feeling uh, so in terms of the dceu um which by the way dceu is not an official title they've never called it that that's something that the fans coined but um, for the DCEU, my favorite film is a toss-up between Man of Steel and Wonder Woman because I thought they were both so good in different ways. But I'm almost certain my solid number three is going to be Justice League. I say number three because if it's a tie for one and two, two can't be there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to see. Um, um, well, we will see tomorrow. Well- uh, I won't see it tomorrow. <laughs> I could probably see it Friday night. Well, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into how many times I plan on seeing it, but I'm going to see it more than once. Um, <laughs> but, and, and that's that. I just, I had, I, somebody posted an article today about that and it just kind of pissed me off. And I wrote my little rant on Facebook and I just wanted to touch on that today. Um, so we're going to go ahead and switch to TV and we 